Today on the Arkham Chronicle, we'll be showing you how to get free tokens by beachcombing. Oh, look at there. It's a nice resource token here. Oh, I love that one. Oh, yeah, I love that one as well. Oh, that one. Oh, lovely. Oh, yeah, lovely. That's three. Magic. New cards are always a motivation when deciding whether to make a purchase. Here we have 20, which is two copies of 10 different player cards. Every class gets two, and there are no neutral ones. All of them are experienced copies of cards you have seen in the core set. Thematically, this makes sense, and gameplay-wise, it is great to see some real classics that have not been touched since 2016 finally get a makeover. The set splits easily into two, with five of the new cards being the skill boosters, which now have an experienced version. Everything about these upgrades remains functionally the same. They still have the talent keyword, and they all give out the same benefits. But they now have double the icons, so if a duplicate comes into your hand, or you've got no resources at all and need an instant boost, these can give you plus two from a choice of two skills. Which obviously stacks with Min's Investigator ability. Secondly, they are now reduced to zero cost, which leaves you with an extra two resources to pump them up right away. These now become a pleasure to see in your opening hand, rather than a tough decision. Before you start doing the happy dance and shouting winner winner chicken dinner, not every investigator can benefit from these upgrades. For our beloved core box investigators, two pips is indeed the sweet spot, as each of them has an off class which is limited to 2 XP. An off class whose stat will regularly need a boost, like Daisy's willpower or Roland's intellect. The Dunwich characters are the opposite, because their deck building gimmick revolves around zero level cards, they can only take the upgrade for their class. Spending zero cost for a card that can boost stats you are already strong in doesn't sound too bad, but losing 2 or more likely 4 XP to do so is harder to justify. The car codes or investigators are unchanged. Min, Will and Safina can all take up to level 2 cards of a second class, so they are fine. Lola is also fine with up to 3 classes. But, as these are talents, not tactics, Mark Harrigan is stuck with physical training as he always was. Forgotten age-wise, all of those new investigators are limited to upgrading their own class, except for Leo Anderson, who is such a badass he can take physical training and hard knocks. Because, you know, everyone wants a drunken pugilist. And don't forget that Father Mateo starts with 5 experience, so he can have both his arcane studies upgraded before he starts. If you have been shopping and got yourself a promo investigator, then Marie Lambeau can only upgrade her arcane studies, as can Norman Osborne, which is weird for a seeker. Silas Marsh can only use the new Dig Deep, and Carolyn Fenn, just the physical training. Now on to the rest of the cards, and why don't we start with a bang? This is the upgraded Dynamite Blast, which costs 2 XP, so if your investigator was on the list for the experienced physical training, they can also take this. You gain an extra combat icon, have the resource cost reduced to 4, and it no longer provokes an attack of opportunity. So you can't be killed before you can light the fuse. This is definitely a great upgrade. But not for the poor Zoe Samaras. What's a girl to do, eh? Rabbit's Foot is a 3 XP card, and that puts it firmly in survivor-only territory. The icons and resource costs are the same, but instead of drawing a single card, you draw cards equal to the amount you fail by, and pick one to keep. This basically becomes an old book of law for survivors. Find somewhere with a high shroud and investigate. If you succeed, you get clues. If you fail, you get cards to choose from. Much more efficient than using the draw action, and perfect for early game Calvin Wright with a zero intellect. Barricade was a card that you wanted to love. It had great theming, useful icons for Seekers or even Roland, and cost nothing. But a 30 card deck doesn't have room for situational cards, and it wasn't until Deciphered Reality came along that hiding out was a viable strategy. This removes one of the big flaws in that enemies could spawn on top of you. Now they turn up next door! Lay this down at the end of a corridor, wait for all the hunters on board to move up to the barricade, and then dynamite blast. Jobs are good un! The 3 XP cost means it's definitely seeker only, but so is Deciphered Reality. Now we have an experienced version of a card that already costs experience. Mind Wipe. In certain scenarios against certain enemies, this functions as a magic bullet, but it wasn't really worth lugging around just on the off chance, particularly as it also blanked out any victory point bonus. This upgrade doesn't go far enough. Reducing damage and horror by one for a single phase is tiny! It might help if a fellow investigator is engaged and needs your help to take three or more actions that provoke attacks of opportunity, but like Barricade, this is situational. The upgrade we were hoping for was to last until the end of turn. Maybe that'll be the next one. Finally, we have another experience card, but this time it gets a downgrade. Sort of. This is the only player card in this box, which suddenly becomes accessible to more investigators than the original. By reducing the XP cost to 2, Wendy Adams can take it. But she never would, as she just recycles her emergency caches using her amulet. 
Leo Anderson can now take it, and so can Lola Hayes. And best of all, Finn Edwards finally can. But you need five resources, and you still only get ten. On the first turn, this card is good, and maybe as a stepping stone toward the original if you don't quite have the 4 XP. But doubling your resource cost, as opposed to more than tripling it, is not good economics. Worst of all, you are losing your wild icon, and that is a real step backwards. So in summary, Return to the Knight of the Zealot is something to expand the core box, and it's the core box investigators that benefit most from it.